So this Christmas, I decided to make a custom piece for my father. He was wearing a watch well before I got into watches. And when I envisioned him, he always had a Seiko watch on his left wrist. He wears a watch every single day to work. Even when he's not at work, he always had a watch on. As far as I can remember, he had a Quartz Seiko Flightmaster. It's considered vintage now. I showed it in a really old video of mine. And a couple of years back, we actually, my family gifted him a Seiko Solar Chronograph. He wore that watch every single day. He wore out the leather strap that he came in. I gave him a new leather strap. He wore out that one too. So my father is a watch guy. He's not into all the little details, but he wears a watch every single day. So I thought it would be pretty special for me to make him a custom piece, and that's exactly what I did. I'll include a short clip at the end of this video during Christmas Day when I gave him the gift, and let's see if he liked it. So enough talking, let's get on to the actual build. So I chose to use the NH36 movement for this build and as always I checked the movement prior to installation like the complications. So a natural day change followed by the quick set change. I also like to check the balance wheel and spring for any deformities and off camera I checked the beat error, amplitude and rate on the time grapher. So the NH36 has both the day and date, but I won't be needing the day. I could have just used the NH35, but just in case I change the dial in the future, I'll have the day complication available to me. So for the dial, I'm using the Blue Lagoon Seiko dial. This is a limited edition dial, an OEM part, so not an aftermarket one. It is quite rare to find, so I only have a few of these. The blue is lighter than the typical blue found on Seiko dials, and I wanted this color and sunburst effect since it matches well with the other parts I have planned for this build. So I prepared this dial beforehand, and I basically converted it from a strictly 3 o'clock dial to now a 3 or 4 o'clock dial. This involves removing the dial feet and making sure that the underside of the dial is completely flat. If it isn't flat, then you'll have difficulty installing the dial because it will be lopsided. Now for setting hands, I like to use a special Special set of tweezers, I bring out my gold plated brass version tweezer and my number 2 Dumont tweezer. I like using brass because it's a softer metal than the handset so it will be less likely to cause any damage. So for the handset, I'm using a Planet Ocean style handset to give the diver feel to this build and it's easily readable for my father. Here I'm placing the hour hand on the hour wheel to align it up prior to setting it. And I'm setting the hand with my version hand setters. Next, I like to test its operation to check that the date change is at the 12 o'clock position. And I also like to get real close to check the spacing between the hour hand and the dial and spacing between the hour hand and the cannon pinion to ensure there won't be a problem when the minute hand is installed next. Now that the minute hand is on, I check his operation and clean both hands with a bit of Rodico. I also check to make sure the hands perfectly align up at 12, which means they will line up at every other position. After checking the spacing between the hour and minute hand, I proceed on to installing the second hand. Once it's set, I start up the movement to check the second hand operation, and finally the spacing between all three hands.
Now I'm using a spare Seiko turtle case with an original Save the Ocean Great White Shark turtle chapter ring. I initially installed the chapter ring and test fit with the dial to ensure everything aligns up. Once everything is good to go, I removed the internals and cleaned the chapter ring. Now I'm inserting the crystal gasket and giving that a clean too. So for the crystal, I decided to use a double domed blue AR sapphire from Crystal Times. I placed the crystal in place, making sure that it is completely flat. Then I set it into place with my Horotech crystal press. After it's in place, I give the crystal an inspection to ensure that it's completely parallel to the case. Once that's checked off, I clean the underside of the crystal for any particles that may have made their way in. And finally, we marry the movement to the case. I always love this part since you can see the design come all together. Now I'm preparing the crown and stem. I'm using the stock crown and stem and lubricating the gasket before installing it to the movement. Since the internal work is complete, I can temporarily close the case to work on the outer components. I will return back to the gasket and case back in the final step. Of course, I perform a mid-build test to ensure everything is operating as should, time setting, date change, hacking, feature, etc. So I used an Oyster Edge or Rolex style rotating bezel for this project and I like to lubricate the gasket and click spring to make sure the action is a little bit smoother. Now we proceed on to installing it with a different press and the watch is looking really nice at this point. Finally, the last component is the bezel insert and I'm using an original Seiko Save the Ocean Great White Shark insert to pair with the blue lagoon dial. I love the play between the grey and blue and can't forget about the lumpip. I installed the insert with some contact adhesive opposed to the double sided adhesive since it gives me some time to adjust the positioning of the insert in case it's needed. Now that all the parts are installed, I can lubricate the case bag gasket and seal it all up. So here is the completed build. I absolutely love the complementary colors despite coming from different sources. I think the oyster bezel really gives off that diver aesthetic and the white second hand provides a nice contrast to the design without looking out of place. Now I don't have a name for this build but I'll just call it the Blue Lagoon Shark Mod. That works. If you have a better suggestion for a name, leave it in the comment below. Shameless plug, I do offer modification services, so if you would like to have a custom watch built, please shoot me an email which is on the screen and in the description box below. 
So here's the clip of gifting this piece to my father on Christmas Day. Let's take a look at his rather hilarious reaction. So I think it's safe to say that he liked the watch a lot and I'm really glad that he does because he is kind of picky with his watches believe it or not. Anyways, I hope you guys had a great holiday and a great New Year's. I really am thankful for all the support for 2019 and I hope you guys stick around for 2020 because I'll be putting a lot more build videos, review videos and stuff like that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I release a new video. I also made a Facebook page at Loomshot, so give a like if you can. So that's about it. I hope you guys have a nice day.